You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. The following podcast is scheduled for one fall. Coming in at 195 pounds from Studio A, he is the reigning, defending, undisputed host of the Ring of Thunder, Sexy Sexy. Thor! Hello, Thunderverse. Welcome to another Ring of Thunder. I will hope you'll uh, mind the possible sniffles and voice breaking up in between. I don't have the Rona, it's just pollen. So pretty much for the second year in a row, we're playing the same game that we played last year, affectionately called by my friend Eric as Plague or Pollen. But I'm almost certain that it's just pollen because the longer I stay inside the house and away from the outside world, my sinuses are actually stay pretty cleaned up. But it's also kind of cold in this house right now too, so that also makes my nose run a little. But we shall see. There is a hole. You know, that light at the end of the pandemic tunnel slowly grows bigger and bigger every single day <clears throat> and so does the ring of thunder i i don't even know what that means i just thought it might have sounded good and i guess it kind of did i don't know you be the judge but while you're being the judge some top news to announce the ring of thunder's social media presence has become a little more official i uh, finally you know, Thursday night, I just came into work in such a good mood for once. And I was just like, you know what? I feel like being productive. I feel like making things happen tonight. And that's exactly what I did. By making a Gmail account specifically for Ring of Thunder, making a Facebook page for Ring of Thunder, and a chain making... a a separate Instagram account for Ring of Thunder and pretty much changing my whole Twitter handle and format and everything to at Ring of Thunder. So yeah, go ahead if you haven't already, if you're on any of those platforms, you know, Ring of Thunder on Facebook, you see the same old iffy, obviously made in paint logo as the little profile picture. And Instagram is at Ring of Thunder. Twitter is at Ring of Thunder. And the email address is Ring of Thunder Podcast at gmail.com. So, you know, once again, like I said in the introductory post on the Facebook page, you know, go ahead and email it and tell me, tell me stuff concerning wrestling or ask me stuff concerning wrestling. You know, especially give me your questions so that I have something to fill out the time with (laughs) I mean shit the back half of Simon Miller's show is him answering questions from Twitter so that's what I want to so ask me on the on any of those platforms but if if you decide to be a dick and you're just like oh you suck sexy Thor or whatever it's not going on the show it might go on Thunder Talk where we like to be self-deprecating to ourselves every now and again and We'll all have a good laugh at you, but yeah, go ahead, speak your truth. And some other top news that actually has to do with something in wrestling. Um, It was announced on WWE's The Bump by Shane the Hurricane Helms, though he didn't have the Hurricane's costume on it, so it was just Shane Helms, but I feel like I have to say the Hurricane in the middle, like... It's an obligatory thing. And he informed Molly Holly that she is the first inductee into the 2021 WWE Hall of Fame. (sighs) And, you know, things are, as far as news and such goes, like new things are starting to really happen on the bump too because, you know, we had that this past week. And then this coming week on the bump, 
we're going to have an official weigh-in for Jordan Devlin and Trent Seven. Well, Jordan Devlin, who is the NXT Cruiserweight Champion, technically speaking, I guess, or maybe, is it technically? Okay, so, pretty much to bring you up to speed, if you've forgotten or don't know, Jordan Devlin won the NXT Cruiserweight Championship at Worlds Collide in January 2020, the night before that Royal Rumble, and he was Cruiserweight Champion, and it looked as if, you know, he was going to sort of balance between NXT in Orlando and NXT UK over in the UK to, you know, be a, a cruiserweight champion across, you know, both of those brands. <clears throat> and then global pandemic, travel ban, and all that stuff happened. So they had that NXT cruiserweight championship tournament, which thus brought us Santos Escobar. And of course, that whole... That nice moment of Drake Maverick getting re-signed after all. And then once NXT UK came back late last year, Jordan Devlin was like, uh, no, that whole tournament was a farce. I am the real Cruiserweight Champion. And actually, you know, he's been recognized as Cruiserweight Champion over on the NXT UK show, and he has defended it in open challenges and such plenty of times. He's been a really good fighting champion. He's like one of the, one of those heels, I guess, technically, who's kind of a dick. But, I mean, he doesn't cheat or do anything underhanded. He just kicks your ass. Those are the kind of heels I like. But the heels that do all the underhanded shit are just funny, too. So he's pretty much Sami Zayn without the shenanigans that make Sami Zayn unique. Because, of course, they had that same whole plot with him with the Intercontinental Championship last year, which of course culminated into Big E becoming Intercontinental Champion. And so now Trent Seven has become his latest challenger, but uh, Trent Seven's a little heftier than 205. So he just been working over the last month or two trying to, you know, trim down to 205 so he can qualify and take on Jordan Devlin for the Cruiserweight Championship. And so, yeah, they're going to have their official weigh-in at the bump on Wednesday. So might have to tune in and see, because I have been missing the bump too, because I watched it like religiously last year during the first few months of the pandemic. And then I that was back when I actually had the time to watch it among with like Everything else. Oh, those were the days. And then, yeah, I sort of fell off it. Kind of tuned in here and there and watched clips on social media and have you, but haven't really kept up with the bump as of late. Which, of course, is too bad. Also, that line this past Friday on SmackDown about Sasha Banks comparing herself to Michael Jordan, that was done by the bump's Ryan Popola in a wonderfully written article like, a couple years ago, I believe. And eventually now it's sort of taken off now that Sasha's just really coming to her own as a dominant champion on her own. But anyway, enough of that. Back to uh, Jordan Devlin. He also announced that you know his travel ban's been lifted, so he will be returning to NXT, I think he said this week, to face Santos Escobar to prove he's the real Cruiserweight champion. So... Just like, okay, that's an, that would be an interesting choice to, uh, <clears throat> to have that happen this week, as opposed to less than a month from now, because one of William Regal's two game-changing announcements that started NXT was that the next takeover is NXT Stand and Deliver, which will be taking place two nights right before WrestleMania. Because, of course, you know, WrestleMania, usually the old format was we had WrestleMania on Sunday night and then Saturday night, the night before, we'd have the takeover for that. And then things that mix up, I don't even know when last year's pre-WrestleMania takeover took place. Like, did it, did it actually happen the Wednesday before WrestleMania or was it just sometime after and they were just like, Hey, yeah, this is the takeover that would have happened. No, 
I think they did that like right before that WrestleMania. Huh. I don't know. But yeah, this was sort of there. Oh, oops. Well, uh, this is what would have happened pretty much. But no, now that all the stuff is getting figured out, of which they even got to do the announcement and have been advertising like a motherfucker that there are now tickets on sale coming this Tuesday for both nights of WrestleMania at Raymond James Stadium. So now, like, they're really pushing the whole we're back sort of thing. And so this takeover will be called Takeover Stand and Deliver and be pirate-themed just like WrestleMania. And it will be on April 7th. Is that the Wednesday? I believe it's the Wednesday leading up to WrestleMania. Yeah. And that will be on the USA Network. And then there will be a Stand and Deliver Night 2 the next night on Thursday. And the 8th. And that will be on Peacock. And not WWE Network. So yeah. <clears throat> WWE fans, get those Peacock logins now. And also, William Regal announced that because of Adam Pierce's shenanigans, <clears throat> he just said, screw it, and he made NXT Women's Tag Team Championships, and he named Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez the first champions since they won the first Women's Dusty Cup here recently, and then almost immediately, Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon challenged them, and they won the titles an hour later when they had their match. But we'll see why in just a second. Because Io Shirai tapped out Tony Storm to retain the NXT Women's Championship and beat the one of the last women to ever beat Io from way yonder back in the 2018 Mae Young Classic. And as Raquel and Dakota were fuming and stewing later, Io came up to Raquel and told Raquel that she wants her next. Raquel did pin Io to win last year's War Games for Team Candice, so that's been some time coming. And the main event was Finn Balor versus Adam Cole for the NXT Championship. And Finn won thanks to Kyle O'Reilly showing up like a time-traveling ghost. And I mean in the way that now Kyle was wearing a Metallica Ride the Lightning t-shirt with a denim vest, skinny jeans, and a studded belt. So this must mean Kyle has actually been a time-traveler from the mid-1980s this whole time. <clears throat> I mean, yes, I know I used to wear metal band t-shirts and skinny jeans, but that was like 10 years ago. Now I wear blue jeans and shirts of modern wrestlers with a dash of haunted house shirts and Atlanta sports team shirts. And that's all when I'm not wearing my work uniform, which doesn't seem like a lot of time at all. That sentence didn't make sense as I was saying it, but hopefully you, you know what I mean. So Finn won, Adam and Kyle were fighting to the back. Then you could just sense the presence through the TV that Finn was also sensing. And Finn asked, what took you so long? And then the camera panned with Carrie and Cross there behind Finn to announce his intentions with just two words. TikTok. The championship match we've been waiting for since August is now less than a month away. And over on AEW, John Moxley and Eddie Kingston are buds again. They were just hanging out on the couch and drinking and making fun of Kenny Omega's failed ring bomb from Revolution. Meanwhile, Kenny Omega was making fun of Eddie Kingston for covering Mox at the end of Revolution, and the mockery included Don Callis pretending to cover Kenny while Kenny yelled, Oh, 69 me, Don, which was definitely the last thing I was expecting, that was for sure. Then Eddie came out to face Kenny and Don and the Good Brothers, and he punched Kenny in the face and got ganged up on. Then Mox came out to help him. Then Christian came out to help the good guys and almost hit Kenny with an unprettier. <clears throat> Mark that down as something I never thought I'd ever see in 2021, but I'm glad I did. Along with the absolute hidden treasure of 2021, Maki Ito, who is just singing her theme as part of her entrance in the six-woman tag match, and even when everyone else were beating each other up and her music stopped, she just kept right on singing. Like, I'll say it once, and I'll probably say it many more times this year. She's an absolute treasure. What is also an absolute treasure is Seth Rollins' suit game. I mean, I can't even describe it. He wears like a different suit every week and 
they're all just so marvelous. And now he's starting to reach pretty much peak Bond villain. And also, he heard that tonight was going to be a rematch between Cesaro and Murphy. And he was just like, huh. So Murphy and Cesaro were having their match, and Seth was watching on a steel chair on the ramp. And then when Cesaro started spinning Murphy around, I guess that triggered Seth, and Seth just jumped in there and started beating the shit out of Cesaro, causing a DQ. And interestingly enough, apparently Murphy sort of elaborated on his whole being like, last week, what's up, Seth? You want me to handle that Cesaro guy for you? Because apparently in a comment on Instagram over, <clears throat> I think it was the picture of Murphy standing by Seth. He was just like, the Mysterios used me. Aaliyah, you know, ju just dated me to get on TV. Dominic just hung out with me so he could go on ringside and have something to do. And then Ray just got jealous because I was supplanting him as, you know, one of the greatest cruiserweights ever. To which one would initially think that that's just some really delusional heel talk from uh, the former cruiserweight champion. But I mean, the way that Ray and Dominic were acting like total heels when they were feuding with Baron Corbin just a, a month ago. I mean, is it, would it be that hard to believe? I mean, Ray and Dom are back to being sort of pretty clear baby faces now, especially because they team with the Street Profits in a weird eight-man tag because, like, a, it was Otis and Chad Gable, Alpha Academy, with Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode, who are the Dirty Dogs. But they were teaming together. But when you think about the history, you're just like, what the hell? We're, you know, Simon Miller said it best. We're nerds. We remember this shit. Because, you know, a year ago, Otis and Dolph were feuding and having a WrestleMania thing over Mandy Rose. And now they're teaming up. There was even one time where Otis got, like, kicked out of the ring and Dolph was just, like, checking up on him. And it's just like, you guys aren't friends. You're both heels, but you're not friends. And then I remembered... uh also on the team was Robert Roode and Chad Gable, who were a tag team and became tag team champions back in 2018. You know how uh, wrestling in 2018, any reminder of that makes me happy. And it's just like, oh yeah, like that's when Chad Gable had like long hair and he was just like this super giddy, super baby face. And that's when Robert Roode was still called Bobby Roode and he was all baby face with his glorious song and then they became raw tag team champions and then chad lost them the raw tag team championship and then that's when bobby Roode turned heel and he beat the shit out of chad gable so there's just like so much history and so much there there's more history in that little four-person team that we saw on friday night than fucking wandavision okay and, you know, you may be like, okay, that's kind of a stretch. And maybe it is, but it's still very timely, very topical, and very apropos, if I do say so myself. <clears throat> and also, I wonder what's up with this Fastlane booking. Because it almost seems like a SmackDown exclusive like pay-per-view. Because, I mean, nothing's been booked for Raw yet at all. I mean, there's still a Raw go-home show left, but... And there might be some obvious stuff like Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus because they had a rematch that was no disqualification last Monday. And it ended with a no contest because they had equally just beaten the absolute shit out of each other with the steel steps. So there's more to that. And I'm sure that'll be fast lane while the Miz destroyed, or er, while Bobby Lashley destroyed the Miz in a rematch. After they initially advertised the Hurt Business WWE Championship celebration for Bobby Lashley, I'm guessing they just turned that into a straight rematch because they realized that would have taken too much time. Because, of course, like the Hurt Business would be out there celebrating, and then the Miz would be like, I don't want my rematch. And then Bobby Lashley would be like, All right. And then he has that epic entrance that he has, and then absolutely destroys the Miz anyway. So we're just like, Let's just get right into the rematch. But yeah, so let's 
break down what we have for fast lane so far. Universal Championship between Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. Now the Intercontinental Championship between Big E and Apollo Crews. We have... Ooh, let me think about this. What else do we have? We don't have any tag titles or any feuds booked yet. Oh, and we have the women's tag team titles between Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler versus Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. But that's confusing because... Yeah, Nia and Shayna are Raw superstars, but Sasha and Bianca are SmackDown superstars, which the women's tag titles are supposed to go across all three brands. But it's just like, does that count as a Raw presence? I, mean, I don't know. This is... Huh. This is an, going to be an interestingly booked fast lane, I guess. Which just seems very one-sided for... Uh, Smackdown, especially because, you know, the Raw Go Home show, there's supposed to be a United States Championship match between Riddle and Mustafa Ali, and the Raw Tag Team Championship between The New Day and The Hurt Business, and that was already booked before Xavier Woods beat, uh, which one did he beat? Did he beat Shelton Benjamin? I don't know. The, the match and the results don't matter what does matter was Kofi and Woods wearing a Scorpion and Sub-Zero inspired cosplay with the whole Mortal Kombat dragon logo on there but instead of the dragon it was a unicorn that was terrific <clears throat> what was less terrific was a whole new alliance between Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler and Reginald because now that Carmella's fired Reginald and Sasha Banks has just been like no, no, go away like, Nia's just like, okay, you're useful and you're kind of cute, so you can hang out with us. And there was this weird skit where they took Reginald shopping and he was trying on clothes and then he just, like, backflipped into Nia's lap and was just like, oh, thank you for the clothes. How will I ever repay you? And then it just got really suggestive. It was just like, oh, I mean, they're both consenting adults of fairly close age so it's not like Ric Flair Lacey Evans weird but I don't know Shayna Baszler was just sitting there like on her phone like I'm bored and oh my god a year ago I just destroyed the whole Raw Women's Division in the Elimination Chamber on my way to Wrestlemania Raw Women's Championship match and now here I am doing this shit I mean um a bored person on a phone can say a thousand words. I'm just kidding. It's That doesn't usually happen, but Shayna is the exception. She was just like, I'm, now I'm here doing this shit? Uh, but anyways, enjoy this commercial break. Maybe I'll have some more, but definitely we will be getting to the Impact Wrestling Woof. pay-per-view-ish. The $10 pay-per-view, the Impact... Ugh. Impact Plus exclusive, Sacrifice. I'm lifelong ensign Charles Kelso. I'm Federation Envoy Keith Johnson. I'm Ferengi Counselor Veronica Dashel. And I'm Andorian Mess Hall Cook R. Allen Siler. And we're the crew of Earth Station Trek. Join us for episode reviews, discussions of themes and characters, and all the news from across the Trekverse. Our logs cover the full gamut of Star Trek. From the groundbreaking original series to the future of the franchise on Paramount Plus. With lots of stops in between. Join our crew aboard Earth Station Trek for your regular podcast escape into the Trekverse. Go bald or go home! Look, we gotta talk. Yeah, Thunder Talk. We're going all kinds of sideways with that sweet nerd junk. Woke nerd junk. It's topical. Political. Dare I say radical. We've got all your latest news and reviews. Hot music. And a whole lot of comedy. But it ain't for kids. Definitely mature content. So let's talk. Let's talk Thunder Talk. Thunder Talk is a proud member of the ESO Network. Hello. Have you ever wondered how much Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster sold Superman's rights to DC for? Or which uh, popular football star was uh, the Sam Wilson the Falcons' physical appearance based on? You can find all that and more at the History of Comic Books podcast, a podcast dedicated to the creators, events, history, and the companies that made the great comic book medium. Hosted and created by your friendly neighborhood, J.T. Wheatley. 
please listen, give it a listen at iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, and all our podcasting platforms. Thank you, and go ahead and enjoy yourself a good comic book. My name is Mark McCray, and I'm the author of The Best Saturdays of Our Lives. I'm Dan Klink, co-host of The Best Saturdays of Our Lives podcast. The Best Saturdays of Our Lives features programming trends from the 1966 television season all the way through the last era of the early digital age of the 1990s. On the show, if it's animated, we talk about it. Order your signed copy today at tbsool.com. And listen to the podcast at esonetwork.com and all podcast platforms. A few more things before we get into Sacrifice. The Inner Circle finally had their War Council. And then they were just like, alright, so we need to do some uh, changes and all that. And then Sammy Guevara came out, who had been recently ousted himself from the Inner Circle. And Jericho was like, what are you doing here? I I told you I don't want to see your face again. Ah." And then Sammy was just like, oh, but you'll want to see this, Chris. And then it played a little hidden camera thing that he recorded from when Chris and Sammy had left the inner circle room about a month ago. And MJF was just like, he got together with Santana, Ortiz, and Jake Hager and was like, okay, so we're all in agreement that we need a new leader, right? And that should be me. And they were all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was just like, oh, looked like uh, Jericho was about to get his ass kicked. Like Hager, Santana, and Ortiz were, looked like they were starting to gang up on Chris Jericho. And then they turned around and stood shoulder to shoulder with him, and they were all against MJF. MJF was just like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. And it's just like, and Jericho was like, what are you, an idiot? You didn't think we talked to each other? And then they were all about to kick MJF's ass when he was just like, oh, but you didn't think I'd have some people of my own? And, uh, the who else showed up but freaking Wardlow, of course, along with FTR and Tully Blanchard and Sean Spears. And they absolutely whooped the inner circle's ass and even threw Jericho through a table off of the stage. Just like the inner circle has done to Moxley pl- plenty of times before. And, except they didn't all do the middle finger thing down to Chris. So I, I would thought that would have been a nice touch. But hey, still, the, the moment was huge. And now the whole damn inner circle were baby faces. Of course, there are theories out there, including you know what I believe would have been like the inner circle would have overthrown Jericho as... They thought to believe, and MJF would be the new leader and be a whole Farouk, The Rock, Nation of Domination sort of story. But no, they just, they really made us think that's what was about to happen. And then they turned the tables and it's just like, oh no, we just have uh, this whole faction. We paired up MJF with people that you thought were just going to be like the modern four horsemen. Except now there's like six of them. And yeah, so we have faction versus faction, and so maybe, hopefully, since we're crawling our way to normalcy, maybe we'll get a blood and guts match between the inner circle and whatever MJF's new faction is. If you remember about this time last year, we were building up to blood and guts between the elite and the inner circle, so maybe it's just like... With, of course, the inner circle being the heels. But this time we could have, I don't know, maybe a blood and guts of the inner circle versus MJF and the country the country club boys, or whatever he's going to call them. With the inner circle being the faces. And by the way, the blood and guts thing was pretty much AEW's version of war games. Even though NXT has war games, the match, and also the name. I guess they're just like, hey, we'll call it Blood and Guts. Especially since apparently there's word that it comes from Vince McMahon calling AEW like nothing but Blood and Guts. So yeah, we shall see where it goes there. It'll get very interesting. And then, <clears throat> um, apparently The Fiend is in a Jack in the Box. Maybe, I guess. 
because while Randy Orton was, I don't know, was he fighting Drew for the 575th time? No, he was fighting AJ Styles. Which is weird because we've seen that match twice in the last six months, I want to say. Two or three times. And it's just like, and everybody's like, that's like a WrestleMania caliber match. It's like, yeah, that was literally the second match on the card in WrestleMania 35. And you just been giving it to us on the Raw main event on free TV. But I mean, I'm not complaining. I'll watch it on as the Raw main event every damn week. But then, while he and AJ were fighting, Alexa appeared on the screen. She was still in her little pentagram in the darkened fire, little Firefly Funhouse room. And she was cranking a little jack-in-the-box. And right before they got to Pop Goes the Weasel, she was just like, uh-uh, not yet. And then she started laughing as Randy once again started coughing up the black goo again for like the third or fourth week in a row. And then AJ com was completely unfazed and just hit him with a phenomenal forearm and got the one, two, three. And it's like, honestly, Omos was kind of a bad friend here because if I saw that shit, I'd be like, I'd grab, throw AJ over my shoulder and we get the hell out of the Thunderdome because it's just like, I mean, I think everybody else is just like, whatever, because The Fiend is very clearly after Randy, but I was just like, yeah, you know, I don't want to be there the day that they just want to go after everybody and we all get killed, so I'm just going to leave now. I would think that would be the smart thing to do, especially for the commentators who are there for this every week, and they're just like, oh, wow, Alexa and Bray Wyatt. They're doing some weird shit. So just being like, oh, maybe we should get out of here. So Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan signed their Universal Championship contract on SmackDown Friday night. But that was only after an opening promo to start the show with Daniel Bryan saying he loves this. He's wrestled more in the last three weeks. Or, yeah, than Edge and Roman have in the last three months and all that. And Edge came out and was just like, yeah, but... That's not how this works. You don't get to be in the main event because you love this. You get to be in the main event by winning the Royal Rumble match. Which is true. And also holding a major championship like Roman did, did and does currently. And has been for the last seven months. Which is still crazy to think that he's now, now been Universal Champion for seven months. Waited like just about two years to finally see that again after he relinquished it. And now he's here and we're seven months in. Good stuff. So finally we got to the contract signing. And Roman was just like, you know what? Two weeks ago I felt like having this match. Now not so much. So I'm not going to sign this. And then Daniel was just like, oh, okay, okay, I'll sign this and then maybe I'll start calling myself the head of the table, the tribal chief and all that, I'll just start declaring all this stuff. And while he was going on, Roman was getting more and more visibly pissed off. And finally, he played right into Daniel Bryan's hands, and he just like, give me a pen, Paul, give me a, give me a fucking pen. And then he signed his name on the contract. And then Jey Uso got in his face and was just like, hey, Pierce, I think we need a special guest enforcer. And then Edge came out and was just like, yeah, I think we do. And, you know, next Friday, I'll wrestle on SmackDown for the first time in 10, 11 years. I'll wrestle Jey Uso, and the winner gets to be special guest enforcer for Roman and Daniel's Universal Championship match. So, yeah, that's gonna something that's happening right now. Edge and Jey Uso will be facing off against each other next week for special guest enforcer rights. Oof, can't wait. And still wondering what Raw uh, titles, Raw matches, will be announced for the card this week. Hmm, but well, hey, we're on Monday. It's the go-home show for Fastlane, so we will see. And then Impact Sacrifice $10 exclusive pay-per-view, which I actually finally subscribed to Impact Plus because the... Exclusive of rent, of rents, events are free on there. And instead of you know paying nine ninety nine a month, 
just to get them separately, I just subscribe to the thing and, you know, it's $2 cheaper. I mean, hell, I'll go with that. There's also a lot of interesting stuff to watch on Impact Plus as well, so I think it'll end up being money well spent, if I do say so myself. Speaking of which, we're pretty much on the verge of WWE Network going into Peacock, so I'm going to need to get on getting that whole Peacock signing up thing happening here soon. <clears throat> but anyway, Impact Plus, real good stuff. And then, so Sacrifice happened. And it started with Crazy Steve and Black Taurus of Decay defeating Reno Scum with the help of Rosemary and the Green Mist. And of course, as I was on my way to work the night that this was all happening, I was actually in front of a Ford Taurus that was black. So technically I was in front of a, or behind a Black Taurus. And that Black Taurus was actually kind of running a little slow for my taste, but the Black Taurus that is in Decay that wrestled Saturday night wasn't as slow and definitely probably more powerful. So I don't know where I was going with that except to be like, hey, hey, Black Taurus wrestled a Saturday night and I was behind the Black Taurus when I was on the road going to work. Whatever. It's these little things that amuse me. Then Tennille Dashwood and Caleb with a K. Defeated Havoc and Nevaeh with some shenanigans, but still didn't help Nevaeh's frustrations at her streaks of getting pinned and her feeling like she's, like, keeping Havoc down. Eddie Edwards defeated Brian Myers in a Holds Harmless match. <laughs> and Brian Myers thought Holds Harmless meant it was going to be a submission match. <laughs> and of course there was some cross-fighting between their guys, Matt Cardona and Hernandez. And in the build-up to this match... Oh, Scott Demore is such a troll, but he's so awesome. Because he was just like, you two are going to be in an eye for an eye match. And they were like, really? He was just like, no. Who would book an eye for an eye match? That's the most ridiculous thing. How would that even work? Oh, those WWE shots. And then Fire and Flava, a.k.a. Kira Hogan and Tasha Steeles, defeated Jordan Grace and Jazz to retain the Knockouts Tag Team Championship. Ace Austin defeated TJP to become new X-Division champion. Deanna Perrazzo defeated ODB to retain the Knockouts championship. Finn Juice, which is David Finley and Juice Robinson from New Japan, defeated the Good Brothers to become the new Impact Tag Team champions. Huh. And then, finally, the main event, Rich Swan defeated Moose to become undisputed Impact and TNA world champion. And we'll move on to face Kenny Omega at Rebellion next month for the winner-take-all of the Unified Impact Championship going against the AEW World Championship. So whoever wins that will be Impact and AEW champions. So, huh. Will we have Rich two belts? Will we have Kenny two belts? Find out. Well, technically right now Rich is already... Rich two belts. I, I don't want to say Richie two belts in case he doesn't like being called Richie, but yeah, Rich two belts technically right now because he has the Impact and TNA championship, but eventually that'll all be moved on uh, over into one belt, and then he'll be going against Kenny Omega for the AEW World Championship, and maybe he'll be Rich two belts again, or maybe Kenny Omega will be Kenny two belts, which still has that same old flow. But anyway, that's enough out of me. <sighs> oh, where can we find you, Sexy Thor? Well, you can find me, and by me, I mean the Ring of Thunder, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at Ring of Thunder, and email me your questions, comments, and concerns at ringofthunderpodcast at gmail.com. With all that said, that's the one, two, three. Thanks for locking up with me in the Ring of Thunder. Kick butts, not nuts, and fuck Jim Cornette. If you don't know, don't worry about it. If you want to know, just Google Jim Cornette. With all that said, see you next time. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping for the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network 
your station for all things geek.